In this world, nightmares lurk. They hide in our neighborhoods, walk our streets, wear our faces. But they are not us. They are the world's best kept secret, and we are going to find them. Welcome to Uncanny Valley Cancer Cell. Blinded briefly by white, white, sterile light and clean gray tiles, your vision slowly acclimates to this new situation and you take in the image of this tiny, young, so goddamn young girl. She's shorter than even Darla. She's skinny. She looks like she's not had an easy time of it. Her brown hair is matted and long past her shoulders. And these green, green eyes look at you. And they seem to communicate this, this tension. There's a hunger, there's a desperation. And at the same time, there's composure. She's assessing all of you. And you and her take each other in for this very tense, very strange moment before it's broken by the beeping of an elevator. Shhh. Doors slide open and a man runs from behind her in this white, pristine space. Like her, he's dressed in scrubs, though his are green where hers are a patterned white with flowers. And he runs and he shoves her away from the door. He snarls at all of you. He says, what are you doing here? Casey, get out. What are you? Why did you open the door? I bull rush him. Okay. Ooh, starting combat first things first. So do we have to roll initiative now? I suppose we do. <laughs> I did not All mean right. to do that off the bat. It just seemed like the most in character thing. I love it. No, I love it. Yeah. Okay. We are here for the unexpected. Initiative. How do we do initiative, Anne? It's dice roll plus flat number. Plus, yeah, whatever plus your, your initiative, initiative mod. modifier. And please don't roll a one this time. Please don't roll a one this time. Okay, so uh, I got a seven. Okay. Yes! <clears throat> oh, I got a ten. <laughs> no, no, I got a... Hold up, hold up. I got a thirteen. Sorry. Okay. I rolled a ten. JD, what'd you get? JD has a twelve. Twelve? Perfect. <laughs> Darla? Ten. Ten. All uh, right. Quick question. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. And Vic, you had a seven? Yes. Uh, quick question. You, when you said that uh, this girl was young, I assume that since she's in scrubs with like flower patterns, that sounds like like young, young, like eight. Prepubescent or pubescent? She is an old teen. Okay, old teen. Okay, so like 17-ish. And eight, yeah. yeah. As far as you can tell. She's okay. somewhere between 17 and 20. Okay. Seven. Mason got a seven. Mason got a seven. Total. Okay, second game in a row. Mason and Vic are just teaming up. Yeah, <laughs> initiative buddies. Hooray. Initiative brothers. All right, well, um, Wolf. Are you still holding on to me? Uh, I suppose that would Always. be a, uh, what is it? What would be a strength brawl? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fair. <laughs> Get him. Sick of Get him. Get him. Okay. Uh, Charge. I'm actually going to burn a willpower on this. Okay. We're two down already. Yeah, so we're rolling. Okay. Ugh. Fuck me. I only got two successes on that. Well, he got none, so you win. <clears throat> oh, yeah. yeah. Shit. <laughs> he didn't expect to get bum rushed by a bear tonight. It's nice picking <laughs> on someone your own size, isn't it? <laughs> um. Yeah. No, he just sees uh this. He's in medical scrubs, and there's this kid, and she's, like, the same age as his sister. 
and she looks like she's been through hell, and the minute he puts his hands on her, he just runs and tackles his ass. Yeah, so uh, Wolf, much like his namesake, just takes Reese down and pins him hard to the floor. Uh, Fuck you! So um, I'm going to say you land. You've got an arm across his shoulders over his neck. He is uh, prone, and I would say at your mercy. Um, You feel uh, these cold, almost icy hands come on your shoulders. It's not a strong grip, but it's, it's the girl, and she's pulling at you, and she's begging you, please get off him, please, no, stop. Why are you... I don't want anyone to be hurt. Please stop. I release the guy. He uh. stays on the floor. His hands are raised um, near his head. He's surprised and, and very afraid. What, would, what, what is anyone else doing here? Uh, well, let's see. That that action <clears throat> was number 13. So, JD, you're, you're up next. Um, I would get closer with my bat in hand, but I'd hold. All right. Now that they've kind of chilled. Yeah. Um, th- is anyone else interested in attacking? No. no. I'm, I have not my uh, preferred methods. So. Yeah, All right. Was, so then yeah. we'll go ahead and end combat since Wolf very right. successfully yeah. um, defused that situation. One and done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Starla. Um, really quick, I'm going to speak too, but I want to ask a question. Um, so... The thing that lifted up was just a door, right? And yeah. presumably she opened it, and it can close in, right? Yeah. Correct. Okay. So in fact, it's it's a, a <laughs> latch that that actually swings back and slid into sort of behind the opening. Uh, the limestone wall near the console was, in fact, a false wall. Huh. Okay. So Darla, um, she sort of looks at everybody and she goes, "Y'all, this is uh, this is all real cute. Uh, I like the I like the spirit that you're you know putting into this wolf, but uh, can we get inside of this place and shut the door so we don't get mauled to death by whatever the fuck is out here?" Uh, Vic Im- Vic immediately echoes that. Just just points it at, at Darla. She's got the right, she's got the right idea. Let's all go go. So I assume Vic and Darla move in. Yeah. Um, I'm JD, gonna, Mason. I'd like to back up Wolf so that he can safely detach himself from them and follow oh, us. Oh, he already has. I, I would I would go in, but as I go by, I would be like, what the hell is going on here? To the yeah. to the dude on the ground. I'd rather find out in there than out here. Well, Let's go. Saying it to the to the guy on the ground. Yeah. He's just in shock. He's not really <sighs> reacting. He's just blankly watching all of you step over him. And it's really not until all of you clear, uh, and he and the girl sort of are able to look at each other and look at what's happened, and she, she reaches out a hand and helps him get to his feet, and he very aggressively walks to a panel on the wall, which perfectly mirrors the outside panel, punches in a code, and the door slides shut, and you hear it lock. So, um, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to go over to him, if that's, if that's okay. Wait. Yeah. Did we go through that door when he locked it? Yeah, you are now no longer in the cave. Okay. You are in a very unexpected locale. <laughs> you are in a, a waiting room, a very modern waiting room with plastic molded chairs with thin metal legs. The walls have big acoustic panels in white and orange and blue. It's all very Silicon Valley. <laughs> And Dude, what the fuck? JD 100% kicks the door. He is really tired of locked doors already. <laughs> he, he earns a glare from the man, <laughs> um, but otherwise nothing happens. So, uh, Darla, with sort of... Wait, they're on our side. Yeah, they're with us. Oh, I thought they were on the other side. You are trapped with the same. two of them in okay, this room. Okay, never mind, never mind. Uh, so... Darla sort of taser in one hand because it never it never went up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she goes over to the man. And she goes, "Okay, uh, so what I'm gonna need is for you to tell me what the fuck this is and why you're here and uh, what the fuck that thing in the tunnel is, please." <laughs> Where are we? Where is this? What is this? What is that thing? And if you explain that to me, then I'll tell you what we're doing here. 
That's a lot of information for these very stunned individuals to take in. Um, They share a look at each other. They look at you. You get the distinct impression that they know things and they don't want to tell them. Uh, Breaking up this awkward moment, a a sort of robotic voice, the same one from the console overhead, says, Welcome to the Unity Research Institute. Please proceed to the check-in desk. We will be with you momentarily. And... That seems to sort of decide things for the two of them. And uh, Casey sort of steps forward and she looks at all of you and she goes, You shouldn't be here, but what is in that hallway is worse than any beast. And I don't know what they'll do to you if they know you're here. So... And this whole time, Reese is whispering things in her ear, and and they sound argumentative. And she looks over, and she hisses at him, shut up. And and I don't know what we're going to do with you, but you're here now. Well, what we'd like for you to do with us is get us back up to the surface and out of here. We don't want to participate Mm. in this. That's not possible, says the man. Oh, well, good. Why, why is that? <laughs> so, let me get this straight. You guys moved an entire, whatever the hell this is, down here, past those security doors, and you don't We have... didn't move anything. We okay. never asked what are you? for any of this. You know, what you're are being you? extremely vague. I, Wolf. You said, uh, what, what, just, yeah, Wolf well, said, what is this place? Reese opens his mouth to say something aggressive, and he's sort of elbowed in the side. Casey looks at all of you, and she goes, I will explain everything. Just give me a moment, please. And she tugs him aside. He's clearly stronger than her, but he does not resist. She sits him in one of the plastic chairs, and they share a private conversation, hissed whispers, and he sort of lets out a sigh and and relents, and she returns to you, um, the calmer voice winning out. You are all in the remains of a secret laboratory. Okay. She pauses for effect. (laughs) Uh And all of us are stuck here until those hunters leave. So. Hunters being the the werewolf? What's hunting who? We don't know. (sighs) Look, they never said who they were. What, What I was told, it was called the Research Institute and it was supposed to be for experimental treatment and and they said it was from a field projects division that's all they ever called them there there were there were doctors and it it seemed fine but you don't it is dangerous for you all to know anymore uh Vic is going to uh, is going to approach Wolf, and, and say, uh, "Listen, uh, I've gotten enough hugs from you at this point to kind of understand that you're the that that you're the empathic kind of people person here. Uh, do you, do you think that maybe you can kind of get a get a level head on this whole situation and s- see if we can get you know just a little bit clearer idea of what's going on? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, not a bad idea." Um, okay, so you're trapped here. Yeah? What did you call me? I didn't call you anything. I just said you're trapped here. Oh, I thought you said I was crap. (laughs) No, look, um, Wolf rubs the back of his neck. He kind of blushes a little bit. I... I'm sorry about tackling you earlier. That wasn't 
I freaked, all right? Stressful situation. I'm genuinely sorry about that. My name's James Wolf. I'm a doctor, but uh, I don't know what this is. So, why are you here? Like, we're here because we were filming something, we got stuck, and the guy who could get us out, well, um... He's probably dead. Darla! I'm sorry, he probably got mauled by the dog person thing. Werewolf. Bear? The bear wolf. <sighs> yeah. Well, I did say the tunnels weren't safe, but I guess you might not have found... I mean, it wasn't like it was for you, it was for him, but... Him well, being the, uh, the other guy? The, she motions toward Reese sitting in a chair. So something's hunting him? <sighs> Specifically? She's very uncomfortable with everything going on here, but she relents. <sighs> this is where we live now. This is where we are safe. We are not trapped here. You all are trapped here. And let me add that you are not safe in here either, okay? But, but I don't want to know what they would do to other people. I don't even know what they might think that you are. I mean, I don't even know what we are now. But, but I thought maybe Reese was right. I just didn't want anyone else to get hurt in this godforsaken place. Okay, how are we trapped here? If you're not trapped here, how come you can't let us out of here? She, she guides all of you over to a desk. There's a, a large white sort of check-in desk with a bay of hyper-modern computers, touch screens and, and thin, flat keyboards and the whole shebang. She taps in a code and it springs to life. Um, and uh, on it you see... Uh, a security feed of different uh, video monitors. Most of them are for, for, you don't really know exactly where they are, but they look like this room that you are in. But some of them do show the halls outside. And um, on the monitor you see, it, it's very dark and hard to make out, but there is distinctly a, a figure, a man, walking through one of the tunnels. Um, you can see very clearly that he is armed. He he has a gun, uh, and he is clearly looking for something. Uh, and she points at him, and she goes, that is one of the fixers, and he is here to wipe this place off the map. So... I don't know what he'll do to you. I know what he'll do to us because we're the ones he's here for. But I don't think anyone here thought that some random film crew would just show up. Well, I mean, who even does that? To be fair, uh, uh, we have permits, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just thinking that. Everything here is, is pretty legal. Yeah, we're above board, so it's not like we... We, we came here and we thought, you know what, we're going to fuck with a secret yeah. science lab in but, the bottom of a not-so-secret psychotic ward. Real. This is very stressful. But if <clears throat> that fellow finds us as we are, guaranteed we die. Does this place, being a modern facility, have any sort of equipment that can be used to defend yourself. That being a storage closet with a fire axe or a hammer or a mop or maybe actual firearms if this is a higher-end facility that had security guards. Are there things we could access to protect ourselves? There's a fire extinguisher in one of the labs. There's a crowbar... Sure. In the other lab. We don't... There's something else, but I don't think I should tell you. Well... Unless we need it. Full disclosure, something's trying to kill everyone in this room. Is that fair? Yes. Okay, and if we want to leave this place because there's a finite amount of food in this lab... Uh, 
we need to do it within the next couple of days, maybe a week. Or we will all starve to death because there are more mouths to feed. We need to go get that equipment and get out. So, when we were above, somebody was ordering materials for this place. That means there's at least one other way to get out. That was me, yeah. So you were up there. Yeah. So there's a way through that door that we used to get in. Yeah. So she... why didn't you leave? We were safe here. We didn't think they were coming. Well, if we can all get up to the top, we have vehicles. So we can leave this place mm-hmm. safely. Yeah, we'll take you with us, BD. She looks like she wants to go with you. Well, Very at, much so. I'm going to look at him. Is, is his face doing anything? Is he staring her down? Is he... Oh, oh he is, he has Reese, is, Reese, Reese. Is, his is his name. He has eyes for no one but her, and he is watching her. And you, if you're taking a moment to really look at him, he is very tense. Listen, honey, I'm, I, I, you know, I understand that there is something that is going on here that is not above board, and I'm, I'm not going to snitch on you. We're not going to call the cops or nothing like that, because obviously this whole situation is totally fucked, and nobody's going to believe us anyway. But, but if you're in trouble and you need to get to get out, this is a pretty good, pretty good cover, because this is basically. I mean, we can just claim you're part of the film crew and then take you where you need to go. Yeah, we can take senior death glare too if you need. Yeah, we have some trunk space. I think you fit real good in there. Quick question, just for the room: uh, Which one of you was the werewolf? Or is he the werewolf? Uh, Vic says, pointing to Why do you them. keep saying werewolf? I think it's an accurate descriptor. I'm just going to keep... Well, they have this argument. Um, who's keep... still looking at... Um... My eyes have not left Reese. Reese? I'm looking at the girl. You're looking at the girl? All right. I'm looking at the girl, too. All right. You two... Um, let's do Let's do a perception. Let's do... Um, but wits and investigation, I guess. All right, what's investigation? Um, can I use Eyes of Strange? Yes. In fact, that's a much better roll. Boop. One success. Zilch. Zero? All right, well... Yeah, yeah I said one success. Uh, so Wolf doesn't, doesn't notice anything, but Darla, you find yourself strangely fascinated as she's talking and reacting and interacting with Mason, um, you find yourself focusing very much on her, like, bottom half of her face, and you notice this, like, twitch whenever she's not talking. You notice she keeps swallowing. And, And at first you think, that's a little weird. By the end of the conversation, by this time... She's done it five, six, seven times. It's very, very strange. And as you focus your attention, you sort of open your third eye or whatever you would call it, you have Mm -hmm. this almost deja vu-like feeling of of recognition, of premonition. And without really knowing why, you leap backward a lot, like three to five feet. You throw yourself away from this woman just before... Mm -hmm. She launches herself at Mason. Mm. And at the same time, Reese uh, bursts up from the chair and runs for her. She throws herself, or her arms, over your shoulders, and she grabs you around your neck. Um, do you want us to roll initiative? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, much better. Thank God. Slightly better. All right, what'd you all get? I got 10. I don't know. We'll never know what that dice was. <laughs> I'm looking at it now. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, fucking GM throwing down 10s. Oh, that's oh, a one. Okay. Okay. You're, you're thought... lucky that she doesn't have much of a modifier. Okay. <laughs> Neither does he. When you're ready. All right, so um, well, I wrote this too close. I think she's still going first, though. So Darla's 10, mm-hmm. right? Mason's 12. Mason. Uh, Vic is nine. 
Right. Oh no, the Initiative Brothers are oh, broken no. apart. Yeah. They broke 12. up the team. Oh. New brother. No. <laughs> Wolf, what do you get? Traitors. Uh, Wolf got a whopping nine. Nine. Mm. Hey, you uh, got a new brother. Nine. So much new concurrent brothers. action. And that would be a lot of compounding action. I'm more like a half brother. What's your uh, What's your dexterity? Two. What's your wits? Three. Uh, here we got to roll off. Four. Seven. You go first. And uh, Vic and Wolf, can you roll off? Uh, well, okay, sure. Single dice. Mm-hmm. Highest eight. Zilch. Okay, All it. right, so uh, Vic will go first on the nine zero. initiative. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so um, Mason, please roll me uh, resolve composure. Actually, no, this is physical. Roll me um, strength and brawl. I have zero points in brawl. Does that minus one? It looks like it minus ones me. I think it does. Unskilled, yeah. Okay. So strength. That's why I have Chance one die. One brawl. Always one brawl. All right. One success. Well, Always thankfully for you, she is a small, emaciated girl. So you do not have a huge amount of trouble resisting her hold. She has you by the neck, but. Her arms are thin, she's severely weakened, and you manage to get your own arm between the two of hers and push her back with your forearm and keep her... Uh, she still has her hands on you, but but her body is kept a, an arm's length away from She you. can't get a good grip. Yes. Uh, which makes it uh, JD's turn. Well, JD's gonna come up in, like, so both arms up behind the head, full Nelson, and then try to pull her away. All right. So, yeah, we'll do that as a athletics, or no, as a strength brawl, and she'll resist it with strength brawl. Two. Oh, shit. Chill out. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Chill out. Stop doing that. <laughs> she rolled three. <laughs> uh, so in her frenzy, she does manage to squirrel out of your full Nelson, but she does have to let go of Mason to do so. Yeah. Okay. So that makes it Mason's turn. Thank you. Um, God. Uh, can I just, like, kick her in the legs and back up? You, yeah, you, you can disengage, I guess. Yeah. We'll call it that. Uh, I'll let you do that just as a move action. Okay. I mean, she doesn't have a hold on you anymore. I'd just rather not have her chase me, so if I could make his job easier and just slap her in the legs with my foot, that'd be great. Okay. Go ahead and make, I guess, an attack roll. Okay. What would you prefer? Uh, What have you got? Uh, Strength or dexterity plus um, athletics or brawl. But brawl would be my. Yeah, one. I mean, brawl would be the action you are fighting her physically, yeah. so, okay. so it'll sp- be at a minus one. Strength or dexterity, your choice. Um, whichever's higher. Uh, you could do this with strength or with with flexibility. This is a move that that either works. Oh wow, two successes. All right. Also tough. So um, we'll count that as as uh, one dashing. Okay. On her. And, and just move forward. Take a step backwards. Maybe she falls down. Maybe Which she doesn't. Which makes it Darla's turn. Well, I'm going to taser her. <laughs> <laughs> How do tasers work? Are you going to shock him? He's holding her. Uh, it would be weaponry mm-hmm. and... Oh, no, literally weasels. Oh, she wheezes her, oh, her way out, right. We'll call it dexterity and weaponry. You don't necessarily need strength to wield it, but you do need to get it yeah. to, to hit, hit them. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's only two dice, so I'm going to add a little power to that. All right. Because yeah. I really don't. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting about willpower. I, sh- I really should be using that. Uh, oh, that would be three successes. God damn. You taser the shit out of her. She is tasered. <laughs> uh, the electrodes make contact with her skin, and she convulses and immediately topples to the floor, uh, and she twitches uh, in that very uncomfortable way that makes... Even someone recently attacked feel vaguely guilty uh, mm-hmm. until eventually she stills. Um, I'm gonna look at um, I'm gonna look at JD and be like, "Do you have any rope in that bag of yours?" Well, we still have one more combatant. Who's trying to stop it? Yeah, we gotta deal with Reese. Yeah, look at Reese. 
What is he doing? Well, he's just stood up from his chair, but his move doesn't happen until five. So yeah. it's your your choice. You have to assess the situation at this point. Uh, quick question: Does he look aggressive? No, he looks worried. Okay. Like I, I, I think, I think that she's she's definitely the bigger threat. Um, so Darla's gonna look at JD and be like, "Do you have any rope? Please tell me you at least pack rope." I can imagine I have rope somewhere. I'm gonna call this an end of combat. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't think. Well, we I mean, need she's to... down, and we're not gonna tag her. Well, I don't think we need to be in combat. If Reese anymore. isn't doing anything, so yeah. so out of combat, Reese does come over. Uh, although his plan has changed significantly from what it was a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, if he tries to walk over to her, I do not let him. Like, okay, he, he has to stay at least two full body lengths. Because he's away. he's running across the room yeah. towards her. Yeah, if no. You don't get to get within two body lengths of this chick. I'm. I don't trust you. I don't trust her. Don't you guys don't just, tell me what I can't do. No. You don't. You. You think I'm the threat? No. I think a, two fucking strangers just ambushed us in this godforsaken laboratory and who the fuck knows where. And I don't trust either one of you right now. So you don't get to do shit. We're in control right now. Stay there. We'll talk to you. That's it. No, honey, honey, I. I... Reese, is that your name, Reese? Yes. He, he is. He is just glaring at Mason, and I can do a persuasion roll. What, bro? What? <laughs> no, at him. No, God, He's, no. Whoa! I, well, I was just like, way to confuse the situation. The, the thing is, I wish if this was what you were gonna do, I wish yeah. we would have done it before we exited combat, because he wants to fight you now. Yeah. So yeah, he's no. gonna he's gonna throw a punch. We'll just do a fight between you and him. Sure. Directly. So he's gonna throw a punch. Be mad. Can she's I... much better at this than I am. Well, I mean, yeah, it's we just a two. Continue with the same initiative. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep our initiative. Keep, from keep it going. Okay. Right. Uh, um, so I'm just defending because I've already taken my action. So yes. what what do I do for defending? Uh, defense. Result, uh, is defense Steven, would, a, uh, a physical defense would be physical traits, right? So. Yeah, that, that sounds right. Okay. Um, well, wait. With combat rolls, I'm pretty sure it's just it's, it's hit and you get okay. damaged. There was, so, because there's a defense the way it worked, stat. What does that do? All right. Go so ahead. here's how it works: in physical combat, hand to hand weaponry, etc., the dice pool is subtracted by the defense modifier. So, uh, what's your defense? Three. Three. All right. Okay. So, buckle. What would be so his dice? That's just pool? one dice, but Ooh, it is a okay. success. So he has one success. All right. So that means it hits. So he hits. He deals one dashing to yes. you. Yes. Cool. It's a good and it's, soft it's a time. it's a solid hit. It was a ten. Yeah. So, uh, so he decks you right across the face. Uh, now I know that Reese just acted, but does uh, Vic have an opportunity to act right now? I'm gonna say since you didn't act in the previous combat or in this one, I'm gonna say yeah. We'll pick you up, and Wolf also will get an action here. Okay. All right. Uh. With, I'm just I'm just wondering how we can defuse the situation right now because we are in their territory and now it's like we're trying to like take over. But to be fair, we didn't attack them. That's no, yeah. To be fair, that's that's absolutely true. But at the same time, it's like these are the only two people who have any idea what's going on, and we're not going to curry any favor by by. No, we tried to have a reasonable discussion my, with them, and yeah. they attacked us. My my thoughts on the matter are: we should do our best to uh, detain them, yeah, and then question them. That was my thoughts, mm -hmm. and then he punched me in the mouth. Well, Reese is resisting arrest. Yeah. Uh, okay. And so, he, I, I'm just going to reiterate: he made it clear that he intends to get to her. He's not interested in fighting you all, but he did not appreciate being told that he cannot help his friend. That is what you all see happen. Okay, then in that case, I'm gonna have a uh, big try to uh, uh, try to defuse the situation. Because if anything, it looks like he wants to keep the peace. So, at the at this point, I'm going to have Vic get between uh, Mason and Reese, and just uh, and just kind of like hold his hands up. It's like let up, let him go to her, let him go to her. It's fine. We have. We uh, we can figure this out, and so uh, I'm gonna have him roll uh, j just what, empathy, what would you, perhaps. I would say empathy and maybe persuasion. Uh, would it be manipulation? Manipulation, definitely. Well, whatever you think, but present at present, I don't persuasion. trust either one of them, so I wouldn't be interested in letting Reese spy. 
Okay. I just figure he'd do something. Yeah, but but he gets I, I to make I, a yeah. persuasion. Yeah, role. yeah. I get it. I got a. How about a composure persuasion? Yeah. Composure is to resist someone else. Oh yeah. For okay. for what you're doing, it would be manipulation, using your social power to affect others. Okay. And uh, empathy or expression, depending on whether you're appealing to their emotions or whether you're making a performance of trying to to diffuse things. Where do you? Use uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say expression. Uh, where it's just like we don't need it. Uh, it's like we we don't need to, to keep fighting. We are, uh, yeah. The, if we the, the more harm that comes to us, the easier it's going to be for for uh, for the what were they fixers? But whatever, whoever they are, they're not to to try and kill us. So presence is when you're using something that comes from your own social power. Uh, one success. So and then you I... get to resist that with resolve composure. Oh god, sorry, Garrett. I'm yeah. good at this. I know. Because resolve composure is yeah. like the de facto one success roll out in, of five dice in World of Darkness. Uh, ooh, but... Well, actually, Breeze isn't going to resist that. He agrees with you. Mm -hmm. I got one success. So I guess in a tie, um... uh, I do have uh, I, I do have a specialty in expression, mm -hmm. but it does not apply. Does not apply. Well, um, in a tie, I believe the defender wins. So, John, Wait, you are entitled to... I think to... I rolled too many dice. I'm going to roll that again. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, still, is that a six? That's, that's, a, that's a nine. That's a 90. Okay, well, I have one success. So, what, what was you saying? I was saying in a tie, defender wins. So, yeah. you are entitled to continue being aggressive, despite uh, Vic's efforts. Uh... Look, I wasn't the one swinging. He just needs to back up. We're not going to do anything here. Everybody just needs to calm the fuck down. Okay. Everybody needs to stop swinging. We need to stop swinging. He needs to stop swinging. Everybody needs to stop swinging. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Just, just. I've just got arms out. I don't want to get punched in the face. Then get out of my way and yeah. you won't have a fight. Go to her. Go. You should let him check on his tased friend. Yeah, I mean, I did just tase at her. <laughs> like a lot. Steven. Uh, sorry. Wolf's going to... He's checking on the girl. Alright. I think it's my turn initiative. It is. is it? it is your turn okay. in the initiative. Right. Aside cool. all the talking cool. we're doing, it yeah. is your turn. <laughs> so, she's um, still convulsing lightly, as you do when you've been tased. She is unconscious. Mm -hmm. um, you check for a pulse. She is... Uh, you know, still living. She is breathing. It is a non-lethal weapon. Cool. Um, I want to roll medicine. I'd like to make a medicine intelligence roll to see what's wrong with her exactly. Sure. Go for it. All right. This is a good dice pool for Wolf. And I get to use my uh, profession rules for this, correct? Yeah, you do. You are a doctor. Oh. <laughs> In fact, because right. your profession is psychotherapy, I will give you some information on her psychological state in addition to her physical state. Very cool. Roll. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Wow, ancient memes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is it really that ancient? Wait a day, uh, I got four successes. Four successes. Nice. Very good, Steven. Mm -hmm. Big spin. Well, it's eight dice. But this is what what Wolf is made for. Yeah. He's a doctor. So um, I'm a doctor, damn it. He kneels beside <laughs> her. Uh, she is wearing uh, very worn scrubs. Uh, they're not clean. And uh, But as he looks over her, she is physically healthy. Um, she is... How do I say this? She is thin, and yet she doesn't look like she's been starving. Uh, she most notably has a lot of blood around her mouth. Um, and if you, I'm going to say because you got a four, you chose to investigate. Uh, as you lift her lip, you do not see anything unusual about her mouth or her teeth or anything in there. Um... Along her arms, you see sort of minor scratches, dirt. There's, you know, blood and, and, and viscera under her nails. And her feet are absolutely disgusting. But as far as you can tell, she is the picture of health. 
uh, as you inspect her sort of torso and check to see that her heart's working, you do the standard sort of physical te checks around her organs, you find some very um, painful looking scars on her abdomen. Um, it, to your professional opinion, looks like some very invasive um, therapy to her organs somewhere in her abdomen. Something to do with uh, her intestinal tract or above, between her stomach and there, any of those organ and organs. Just by looking at the incision, you can't really know for sure. It's not entirely your expertise. Um, but you can certainly guess from all of this that she was had to have been a patient somewhere for a long recovery time, and she certainly is not psychologically well. She's clearly been through a lot of stress and it probably has some real trauma that she's going to have to work through. Wolf takes a deep breath and he stands up. Mason, let him see his friend. Please. All right. I set my arms down and I step out of the way, but I'm watching him very carefully the whole time. He quickly but very gingerly walks, and he does have to walk through your group. It is a very uncomfortable place to be, but he passes you and, and slides to the floor and immediately, very gently, picks her up. With one arm under her under her shoulders and one arm under her knees, he picks her up, and without a word, he turns and he goes through the open door behind this welcome desk into uh, all you can see is is the elevator that yeah, he definitely, came. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely following. following. Oh yeah. He assumes yeah. you all are following, uh, and he leads you through a very claustrophobic little hallway into a, a door which reminds everyone of Star Trek <laughs> as he knocks the button with an elbow and the door slides open. It is a circular elevator and he steps in and he glares at all of you and he says, wait until it dings and I'll get off and then you all can take it back up. Technically. He says this because there is not enough room for all of you to be in there while he is carrying her. And then the door slides closed, and you all have a moment to take in what's just happened before the elevator returns. What the hell is going on here? Well, I. Those kids have been through some shit. Can I look for that closet described with the fire extinguisher? Uh, there it, are no other rooms on nearby. this level. Oh, okay. It is just the room that leads to the elevator. And um, as you as you gaze around, it's not hidden. You don't have to roll for it. The door that you've just gone through is not maybe not a two-chamber door, but a very similar kind of security door. It's very heavy. It has uh, some very serious bolts on it. And you can kind of infer that this is a, a beautified version of a, of a secure holding chamber before you get into the actual facility with the room she was describing. Mm -hmm. At least we're, uh, at least we're out of the room, or at least we're out of the cave now. Is, is yeah, this listen. room lit? Why? Very oh, well yeah. lit. Okay, it's a very well lit room. I don't know that this is any better than the cave, to be frank. Hey, at least we can see what's happening, you know? At least we know that those guys are probably the only people in here, um, and we are away from whatever the fuck, presumably... Uh, was in the tunnel. Wait, ju just a second. Uh, uh, Vic is going to double back and take a look at the computer screen, see if anything has changed as far as the guy lurking around in the caves. Sure. All right. You go over to the desk. Um, it's a double screen monitor with one computer. Um, it does not. It does not, to your knowledge, without like a computer check, do mm -hmm. anything but have the the video feed. Okay. Um, but it does show the screen that you saw before. Uh, you see 
uh, Reese exit the top of the elevator, you can now ascertain that that monitor is the top, the next floor, whether that's up or down, you can't say. Um, and you see him walk down a short corridor exactly like the one you were just in through a door, and then he appears on another monitor uh, walking through what, uh, now that you have a moment to look closely, appears to be a lab. Uh, can I get a sense for the shape of the place from uh, from the cameras, or is it just kind of difficult yeah, it's, to tell? It's very odd, because not only is the image distorted by the fisheye of the, the security lens, but the walls themselves seem to be curved, as though one edge of each room is sort of circular. Mm. That is very Star Trek. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's, um, it's, when, especially from a security camera, it's very disconcerting, very hard to look at. Would this guy's gait insinuate that he's the same guy who walked past us in the hall when we were hiding in the hole? You know, JD, I'll give that to you, because you were watching very closely. <laughs> no, it looks very different. Um, he has, uh, I mean, granted, he is carrying a heavy weight, so it's not his normal walk. Um, but he has a sort of, like, teenager shift to his hips and, and a sort of carefree, like, movement that does not at all re- resemble okay. the figure that you saw earlier. Does it look like, uh, does it look like uh, Reese is doing anything other than doing something to take care of, uh, uh, I almost said Carla. Uh, Casey. Can I, really quick, mm-hmm. pull out that letter? Yeah. From the tunnel? From yes, the you can. Okay. Let me get that for you. What, what do you want, Vic? Uh, it, does he look like he's doing anything other than doing something to take care of Casey? I just want to make sure that we're not just going to walk into a trap like we get down to the next floor and he has, not at he all. has a gun. He, he doesn't look like he's doing anything. Um, he, I mean, he, he does... No, he doesn't really. He, he has both his hands are full. He's walking through the room. If you continue to watch, he crosses the frame of the room, comes out on another camera, crossing the other side of the room. It's, you infer it's a rather large space. Um, and then he leaves out the other side and does not appear. You notice when he doesn't appear on another monitor that uh, five of the spots on this array of cameras are either obscured, cracked, or turned off. Okay. And that is, you can presume where he's gone, since every other aspect of this facility, including you all standing at the desk, are on these monitors. Okay. Well, if he's uh, as long as he's not like you know, like lining up a shot from from the uh, from where the elevator <laughs> opens up, I think we're gonna be okay. Uh, Darla. So, uh, because Darla was the one that read the letter last time, I think she remembers it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, what did we do with it? Did we... no one picked it up? No. As far as we all know, it's still there. Okay. So, um, being that is she is a semi-trained actor, I feel like she is probably a pretty good visual. Uh, that was that was recently, and it was a very strange thing. Yeah. I'd say she can recall anything she read there. Um, she she sort of has a like an aha moment, and she goes, "Ah, uh, boys, boys, ah, uh, ah." Uh, do you remember when we first came down here and we ran into that that letter we found in the in the wall and I read it in front of the camera? Mm-hmm. Remember that? There was a bear and then it was running and then yeah, was before the bear, JD, bear. before the bear. Yes, if you can remember for that I mean, far back. We're just gonna recite the order of events. Yeah, before the bear. Remember when I read that letter? I think that that letter was to him, to the boy, because it, it addresses. It addressed somebody named Reese. I think that kid's name is Reese. I think that that was to him. And I think that this yeah. place is some kind of, some kind of like, like safe house, maybe for, for people like them. The mentally unstable? Yeah, considering we're below a mental institution. Well, clearly there's something more going on here. I don't know if somebody was, Taking things, people, and animals down here and experimenting on them and then maybe letting them loose in the tunnels. I don't know what the hell is going on, but I think maybe, I think we're, we're going to have to get them to trust us a little bit. We're going to have to stop yeah. punch, punching them slash tasering them. And I'll, you know, I'll take responsibility for one of those things, but I didn't <laughs> think she was going to stop if I didn't taser her. So, 
what we're gonna have to do is somebody who's good at talking to people. So I'm gonna say you or Vic or maybe me. Uh, How about if you're gonna talk to him, you give me the taser. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't think I can. Th- then I'll talk to them. I mean, I'm just gonna say the taser is not leaving my hand. You want to hold my hand while holding the taser? <laughs> You're more than welcome to do that, but no, I'm sorry. It's like the anti-dual wielding of tasers. <laughs> it might be for the best that I don't speak to Reese. So what if you guys want to do is if you, uh, anybody who might be good at computer stuff, which is not me, uh, if you want to maybe take a look through this computer, I'm going to go into that elevator Probably that's what that is. Uh, and go upstairs. I'm going to talk to that boy. I'm going to see what I can do to get some information out of there. Because I don't want to die in a hole in the ground. Thank you. Let's uh, let's right. see if we can all go. I mean, if, if only some of us go, they're probably going to think something's up. Well, I think he knows when some of us are going to go. Well, that they, was- ba- they barely fit. Okay. Yeah, that elevator only holds a couple of people at, uh, at a time. It will, okay. it will hold all of you. It was simply because she was horizontal. There just wasn't okay. room. You all can go in one trip. Well, you want to... Is it back yet? Ding! <laughs> <laughs> if you want to split up and do some investigating, we might be safe for the present moment. I'll stay down here because I don't want to talk to that son of a bitch. Yeah, I, what I think we should do is, uh, you know, I, 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 I hate... To, to, to sort of split the group a little bit, but I think for the moment, they are the most dangerous things yeah. in here. And I think if you guys want to investigate this area, I think that that is okay. Uh, uh, how about I go with you, Darla? Okay. Yeah, I'd also like to go. I'm not staying in this room. <laughs> well, let's not go alone. Vic, can you work me through these computers? Uh, I can sure try. Uh, okay. What, what what kind of OS are we looking at here? Um, you can't. It's it's just a video screen. I'll need a okay. computer's jack for you to operate the computer. Oh, I'll, I'll to, figure it out. I'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm happy to investigate with you. I'm really good at investigating. But, but yeah, it's it's familiar. Like the the machine is clearly a, a mass produced machine. Well, everything's so are, white, so it's got to be Mac. So are they taking off while we do this? <laughs> Are you if guys, that's what yeah. everyone's deciding, then so I think the JD, um, Darla, and uh, James and Wolf are gonna go upstairs. All right, so we'll, if you all are okay, we'll follow yeah. them upstairs and we'll come back to you down here. Sounds good to me. So you all hop in the elevator, uh, it closes, and there's only one button, <laughs> so you press it and you are whisked, and you all can tell that you are going down. Oh, god. <laughs> Do we get some shitty like elevator music? Integrity roll. That no, was the wrong is. decision. I didn't want down more. Integrity roll. I was just praying for up. <laughs> <laughs> it it is actually so quiet and such a smooth ride. It makes you wish for bad elevator music. <laughs> it's just gonna tell um, us what's going on in the Citadel. <laughs> I I do have to ask: Is J- JD? Are you visibly like audibly? Upset? Yeah, well, no, he'd, he'd be, like, rubbing his temples, and he'd just be like, uh, oh, God. Honey. More why down. down more? Are you? Um. You are claustrophobic, are you? I mean, maybe a little, but that's not, that's beside the point. Just. Uh, you know, that's hey. a, that's deeply ironic, given your, your profession. You know, you can deal with stuff, but this is, this is different. That, that's controlled. This is not. This is very not controlled. This is anything Listen. but controlled. Hey, 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 JD, look at me. Look at my eyes. Look at me. Okay? Deep breath. Okay. Ding! I'm not going to let you die down here. And the doors, the doors <laughs> open on that. Perfect timing, as always. And uh, the hallway's empty. You step out. Um, this area, it's clean with an overlayer of destroyed, <laughs> if that makes sense. The area is not filthy or disgusting like the rest of the places you've been this evening, but nothing is where it should be. It's, um, there's some sort of, uh, 
overturned vases on the floor in this hallway. One of the doors is sort of off its hinges, and um, you just see sort of papers everywhere on the floor. There are, ahead of you, three doors, one to each of your sides and one directly in front. The one in front is closed, and um, the one to the right is open, the one to the left is closed. Um, when we watched the boy, Reese, go on the video screen, did we see him go through any of these doors? Yeah, you saw, well, you, you didn't see the door, but you did see him go through a lab, and it looks like the one where the door is open. All right, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the, the open door. All right, so um, you walk in. It is a large space with um, one curved wall along one side and a sort of two uh, square walls that meet. And uh, the room is arranged around a series of large stainless steel lab tables, big white cabinet cases along the walls with inset sort of cutouts with lights underneath that all sort of hang over these sort of really out of place planters with succulents and, and vine, viney kind of plants. Um, it's, like I said, very Silicon Valley. It's a cold, austere place with the illusion of warmth and lots of, you know, glass beakers and things. Uh, the only thing really odd about it is simply that it's a mess. There's papers everywhere. Uh, chairs and stools are sort of overturned. A lot of the cabinets have clearly been ransacked. <laughs> And uh, it looks like a bunker, pretty much. The, uh, on the other side, there's a door exactly mirroring the door you've just come through. And uh, it is, it is open. Uh, I'm gonna go towards it. All right. So you walk forward. Um, are you, are you looking around or are you just gonna go straight for the door? Uh, I'm sort of cautiously going towards the door. So I think she's definitely sort of taking in her surroundings. Um, but she is that talking to Reese is her, her primary destination. Okay. Well, um, she's on the right track. Uh, she can hear murmured voices through the door on the other end. The hallway on the other side is, is dimmer. It has a warmer sort of light. And uh, she can clearly make out the voices of the two people she's just met. Uh, I think she wants to uh, pause at the doorway for a second and maybe try and eavesdrop a little um, just for just for a couple of seconds and see if she can sort of press her, her ear a little bit closer and see if she can get an idea of what they're talking about. Sure. Um, uh, the first voice you hear is Reese. We shouldn't have done that. That was this is insane. We should have just let them. We couldn't have. Shh. Just, just quickly. I, I can't. You have to. I can't. They're right there. I, you could, you could lose it if you don't. And there's sort of a silence, and then it just sort of peters out. There's no more talking, um, but you hear them both breathing, and uh, you hear her voice or her her breath sort of accelerate, but uh, there's no more talking to be heard. Um. Uh I let that sort of like give it kind of a second, and then I um, then I sort of knock on the door and uh, walk in. All right. Um, so you walk in, and what you find is not a room, but a sort of curved hallway, and uh, five doors in that hallway, and the one nearest to the door you've just come in is open, and all you see is Reese's back. Uh, facing away from you, filling the, the view of the door, and then beyond it, what is clearly a very small cell with a hospital bed, and um, the, the girl, uh, Casey, is sitting on it, um, but you can't quite see what she's doing. And when you walk in, they hear you, and Reese, sort of awkwardly, he looks over his shoulder, and, and he looks sort of uncomfortable, and he, he looks like he's trying to talk to you, but he doesn't turn around. And he goes, just a minute, just a minute. I'll be right out. We'll we'll we'll, we'll work through this. Just um, uh, just one minute, please. Um, I think she would definitely give him a second to mm -hmm. finish whatever he's <laughs> that, doing. whatever's going, going on, on there. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's definitely gonna 
<laughs> like watch it, like side eye it. We're all like, what the fuck is can going I, on in that room? Can I look around in the lab Nothing area? Good. Yeah, sure you can. Uh, roll me an investigation. Uh, wits investigation. One. One. Um, all right. <laughs> you, um, <laughs> as you look over, the thing that immediately stands out about the room is the row of, of plants because it just seems so odd to see that underground. Mm -hmm. um, and you notice uh, a section uh, to the far side uh, where they all look kind of weird. And as you look close, you see some of the plants, you're not sure exactly why, but they're hooked up to like IVs with with like what looks like blood in them in your the only thing you can conclude is that these are somehow man-eating plants <laughs> that's all you get for what die <laughs> oh. i'm gonna kind of look at that closer they look like so like they do they have like mouths or no they're just they are they're ordinary looking succulent plants except that they have a, a deep burgundy almost beet like color and they have and just, IVs in them. They're just pumping what appears to be blood into the plants. I mean, you're you're a stunt man. I think you know what you're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> they're pumping blood into the plants. Yes. <laughs> stunt men know their succulents. Um, they're really into horticulture. You say that out loud, right? <laughs> What'd you say? JD, you say that out loud? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, would you look at that? This place is hell. Uh, <laughs> Why would you even... I mean, I guess there'd be nutrients, but... I mean, uh, I don't know, man. I did. I, 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 I was actually scared of the Triffid movie when I was a kid, so uh, this, is, this is my nightmare. I hate, yeah, this. Yeah, I hate this so much. None of this is helping the anxiety that I have. Oh, sorry, sorry. Deep breath. Deep it's breath down, and, survive. and then the plants, and the blood, and why? Why? But why? 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 <laughs> the aesthetic. At that point, um, Reese comes out, and he is wrapping a bandage around his arm, and he said, "All right, what do you want to know?" Well, uh, <laughs> firstly, I would like to apologize for. A tasering a friend. That was probably a bad move on my part, but I really didn't see another way out of it. And I want you to know that I don't normally go around tasering people, um, but I had a very stressful night, <laughs> uh, and I I'm sorry about it. I really, I really do mean that. He's staring at you blankly. His expression does not change through your entire apology. Uh, and I, I want to apologize for my friend uh, Mason uh, for the, the little bit of a scuffle you bo you boys had. Uh, because, you know, like I said, we ha we're having a tough night. And Mason just, you know, has some opinions about things. Anyway, um, and I was, what well, I want to thank you, firstly, for letting us come into your bunker uh, is it's very nice bunker. Uh, well, honestly, it's a little creepy, but but it's okay. Um, and I want to ask you. Someone interrupt her. What is going on? <laughs> <Recess>. <laughs> no, no, JD yells back. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Deep breath. Calm down. Look. All right. You already told us we're in a lab. This was some sort of secret thing. I get it. What did they do to her? She was one of the lucky ones, if we're being honest. He um he motions you with a nod of his head and he walks across the lab into the, the corridor and then do you follow him? Yes. Yeah. And he keys oh, open the door to the lab on the other side. Uh, he lets you all in and sort of motions apathetically around. Uh, you look around and it's it's a similar look. It has a similar planter, though without any weird blood plants on it. Uh, the difference is that this one has a sort of glass subdivision with a big executive desk in it and a sort of bullpen of desks on the side. 
and he said, uh, this is a cutting edge research facility in curing humanity's ills. And he walks over to the big office in the middle, uh, slides open the door, and uh, picks up a name plaque, one of those wooden plaques with a brass name on it. And uh, anyone paying attention uh, will see the name. <sighs> Sorry, guys. It's been a while since I wrote this. <laughs> Yes, you see the name Elise Songbei. Elise, S-E-O-N-G dash B-E. Now, does that name ring a bell for me? No. Not oh. in the slightest. Uh, and he picks it up, he sort of tosses it in the air, catches it, and he goes, and they were supposed to help us. And he throws it, and he breaks the glass in the office. <laughs> Uh. Yes. So, what's wrong with you guys? What's wrong? What's wrong? We have fucking vampire things inside of us. When you say vampire, <sighs> do you mean like a parasite or... And he's just, he's worked himself up just to the point that he really doesn't care what you all know or don't know anymore. He's not Casey, and he doesn't really care about your safety or what you should or shouldn't know. He storms out of the lab, and he pokes open the third and final door in the atrium, and he leads you inside, and he said, that, that is what I mean. And he points to four tubes, large tubes full of fluids containing humanoid-looking creatures. And they are all suspended and motionless and submerged in these tanks and hooked up to all kinds of machines. Um, the left one is empty. The one next to that has a, a female figure in it with black hair and a, a sort of very prominent um, nose. And then to the right uh, is a, a very tall, very elongated sort of figure with long brown hair and a, a sort of uh, beard, like a, a goatee and beard. They're all pretty much naked. And to the right of that, you know, make an integrity check. Jesus. <laughs> Shit. To the right of that is the scant remains, which are barely recognizable as a human form. Two. I don't One. Think I actually oh, that. Roll, roll, roll. Uh, that would be nothing. It's not a critical failure. It's just not a spell. All right. Well, Tris. So you um, take the condition um, nauseous. Um, you're sort of physically revolted and upset by the sight. Okay. Um, his right leg is severed at the thigh. Uh, his entire uh, abdomen and chest are just a hollow cavity. Um, and his sort of, the skin has been completely removed from his, his left shoulder all the way down to his fingers. And a, a sort of really an eerily precise cut has been made down his face and, and across his cheek. And there's a whole section of his head that's been removed. And, a, and his, that part of his brain is missing. It is a really, really revolting, disgusting sight. What the fuck? Yeah, I'm going to need you to explain this to me a little bit. I, I don't really know what I'm looking at. Also, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. I got I to gotta be real. I mean, people literally eat roadkill where I'm from, but that is... I, I, got, I got nothing. Yeah, you're going to need to explain it to me. Uh, I, did you... Okay, so... I know Mason downstairs referred to that thing we saw in the tunnel as a werewolf, and I, I've been just trying to think my way through it, and I thought it was a dog, like a really big, maybe like a big dog. Or a bear. I don't think that was 
a bear, but yeah. Maybe I mean, I I've never seen a dog that big, so. Yeah, maybe like a small bear. Anyway, um, are you trying to say that that this is a thing that's, are you trying to say that these are vampires? Like actual, like, like Edward Cullen's going to come in here and sparkle ass a little bit kind of vampires? Or, or is this like interview with the vampire kind of vampires and Lestat's going to come in here and be, you know. Um, Listen, Darla. I don't. I don't know vampires. how any of this works. All right, I just wanted to go to college. You know, I just thought, hey, you know what's quick cash? Just you know, be with one of those those experimental things. You know, my uncle did it in the seventies, and he said it was fine. It, it, it I, was not. I did fine. it too back in college. It was not yeah. fine. It was. And he walks over to the mangled, eviscerated corpse on the far right, and he points to the the sort of vacant space in in its chest, and it goes, "Half of that shit is in my body right now." You mean they put pieces of him in you? Yeah, you know, it's just like biological Legos, right? You can just do that to a person just because they signed a piece of paper that said you could. That. Oh. And and Casey, don't even get me started on Casey. She was in a car accident. Yeah, everything below, you see that? That's that that's the diaphragm. Everything below that, that's what she got. Yeah. It's funny. Isn't it just so funny that we're in love because we're basically two halves of the same fucking person. And at this point, he, he can't stand to be near these things anymore. And he sort of shoves past you, shoulders through the group of you, and walks out. And he goes, so there. At least now you know why you're all going to die tonight. Because some genius at, at the county parks and recreation or whoever the fuck decided, yeah, that place is abandoned. You all can go there. So what should we... Honestly, I don't know what we're even supposed to be afraid of at this point. Because you said that there's a somebody in the hall, which is a fixer. Is that what you called them? They came once before, but the werewolves were here. They, I don't... The werewolves don't like the spirits. They don't like what they did because when, when the other two died, they started doing stuff and... Listen, I don't know any more about any of this shit than any of you, except that now I know it's real. And and the the werewolves, when they first came, just looked like people. They didn't look like anything weird. And they were talking about spirits and anger and passing on. And the doctors and the scientists fucking shot them. And now all of these people are coming here and... And they all left. They all got out of town, and they just fucking left us here. And so we thought, well, where can we go? We're not normal. We can't just walk out in the street. So so I went out, and I started getting stuff because I'm the most normal. And God damn it, we were, we were just starting to think we were safe here. And then these guys kept showing up. They have these weapons. They're not... They're like magic or something, and they just want to erase us. They just don't want anyone to know anything that happened here or that we exist or anything. At least I think that's what they, I don't know what they want. They just, we were very lucky that the werewolves came last time. And while we've been watching the security footage, or Casey was, I went to try and get guns or anything. I kind of failed. Phenomenally, I mean, we don't have any money, but she was watching the cameras, and when I got back, she was telling me, the werewolves aren't coming this time. I don't know how we're going to get out. If the werewolves aren't coming, then what What killed Henry? There's Who's Henry? attacked us? We had, a, we had a PA, a production assistant named Henry. He was, honestly wasn't very good at his job, but... He was Darla. I'm sorry, he wasn't. He got my coffee order always wrong. Who gives anyway, a fuck? Anyway, anyway, I he well, he's probably dead. I'm gonna start that. He was supposed to. There's a door. You know the door 
between the basement and the upstairs, the, the door with the, you have to be buzzed in. The west wing? With the, with the slidey card. With the, the slidey the key thing. Yeah, yeah, the west wing. Yes. Well, uh, he was supposed to be waiting there for us while we filmed this segment down in the basement. And then uh, I think... I, I think the the werewolf that we ran into into the tunnel, I think he may have killed Henry because we tried That doesn't to, make any sense. We tried to radio him over the walkie talkie and he was like, Shut up and then we heard noises that sounded suspiciously like he was being mauled by a dog. So No, that's ridiculous. The werewolves want people to stop dying here. Well, I, I'm pretty sure that he's dead, so something killed him and it sounded awful lot. Well, whatever like, one of those things was chased us deeper into this place. Yeah, that that's why we were running around is that we we were we were walking down here, we didn't know anybody was down here, and then all of a sudden this this big I guess it was a werewolf, <laughs> this werewolf thing exploded through the wall <laughs> and uh then we all kind of collectively shit our pants and ran away. Oh my god, this is fucking terrible. Can't believe she talked me into this. And he walks out of out of the atrium and back into the lab. And if you don't want to Falling continue like, listening, you'll just follow. Just where, where, where do you leave so that we can all go and leave that The way? other one is over there. We are stuck. The we were kind of, what? for some fucking reason, we thought maybe you all were here to help us. But apparently, you're all just some random people that just wandered in at the worst fucking time ever. Hey. You don't even just, have weapons. I... I mean, technically Excuse me. Bad is, I have a taser. But we're gonna, we can still help you. I like the offer still stands. That it, how? With what? There are. I'm a doctor. He's a doctor. A and B. And upstairs we have a bunch of vehicles that we can take and get the fuck out of this chicken shit town. We can get you anywhere you need to go. We're traveling across the country right now. We can basically... Te- technically true. We can well, basically smuggle you in our fucking cargo vans. <laughs> well, since I've already blown all the rest of our secrets, I might as well give you the full disclosure of what you're offering. He walks through the initial lab that you went through, back into the back corridor with the line of small rooms, and uh, he sort of goes along the wall, and he punches these blue buttons next to all the doors, and... There were panes of frosted glass, and when he pushes them, they sort of unfrost, and you can see inside. And he goes, look, I I appreciate what you're saying, but you really should know what you're offering first. And he sort of just stands there and crosses his arms and leans against the, you know, the sort of wall and waits for you all to be horrified, I guess. Well, what's in there? What do we see? <laughs> Looking, they I are, suppose. They are, they are cells. Um... And you can see why he does not unlock them, because they each contain equally horrifying sights. Um, one of them uh, has a man on a stretcher. He is, they're all young. They're all teenagers. Um, and he is sort of stretched out on a gurney, and his sort of lower half of his body is consumed with this black um, sort of, it looks like a, a flesh-eating virus. Uh, like he's just being slowly consumed by something. Uh, in the room over, you see what can only be described as as a beast. It's it's a human girl who is completely feral, um, and is sort of sitting, uh, leaning between her her legs, which are perched up to her shoulders, and she's just chewing on on not on her fingernails, but on her fingers, and looking skittishly around. Um, and the final, the final room is uh, contains Casey, um, who is uh, licking some blood off her lips, <laughs> and she glares at you, and uh, she glares at Reese, and and she just rolls her eyes and goes, "I fucking knew it. I fucking knew you would just tell them whatever. I just wanted to keep them safe, Reese, for fuck's sake." And he just goes, "Well, what? What do you want me to do? We're stuck here. Where?" What, at least maybe they can help. They're not going to help, Reese. Be realistic. This is insane. And she just kind of walks out. 
in Reese sort of just sighs like he's done this a million times before. I mean, I mean to be fair, Reese, I do actually agree with you here. I don't. I mean, we can't help if we don't know what's going on. Then we're just you know dead weight. Word choice, dude. I mean, but realistically, though. <laughs> okay, so, all right, so, so, how many of these fixtures are in these tunnels right now, would you say? Two. Two? That just, we know of. Just two, and they have magic weapons? He shrugs. When you <laughs> say, great. When you say magic weapons, do you mean, like, is it, like, Harry Potter does it shoot does it shoot magic out of him or is it like a is it like a like a laser weapon he sort of makes vague motions with his hands sighs and then goes out back to the lab where there's a whiteboard on one of the walls and he he grabs a marker and he draws some very rudimentary stick figures <laughs> and he he draws you know a circle with two legs and he draws a circle with a triangle under it and he goes, this one, and he points to the guy, and he draws a really oversized, really awkwardly shaped, like, L. Yeah. Like, has a gun. And this one, he points at the, the girl figure, has some kind of chain. I don't know. She she wrapped it around the the, the werewolf earlier, and, and I don't know what it did, but he, he screamed real bad. So are they here because they knew about the werewolves? Are they here for you? Do they know specifically about you guys? Or do they just... He um, he turns around to a table that uh, has... You all didn't notice it purely because the whole place is covered in paper. But it does have some paper stacks and a small um, brown notebook. The color of like a, a paper shopping bag. And on the front of it... It has the letters F, P, D. And he holds it up and he goes, see, here's the thing. We didn't know when we signed on, they, they said it were, they were a research institute. Well, we found this handbook that's for this whole fucking other thing. And it's like corporate like bylaws and stuff and like procedures. So there's some kind of people that, that run this place, right? And, and it says, and he flips it, and there is a sort of section that it just sort of falls open to, like it's been looked at many times. And he says, upon failure to contain assets, it is our corporate policy for assets to be exterminated. And he goes, why, why would weird people, human people, with crazy magic weapons, show up here if it wasn't to carry out their stupid fucking rules. We tore this place apart after the last attack. We didn't know why they were here. That's all I can figure. There's, and he pulls out a folder, not so much a folder as it is a yellow folder with a single piece of paper in it. And uh, he pulls it out and it's an employee list. And he says, these were our doctors. And he sort of shows it to you. And uh, you all I take it. can take it. Yeah. Um, he goes, listen, if we get out of here alive, all I care about is disappearing. But, I mean, I guess it would make me feel better to know that someone else knew. Even if nothing ever became of it, just to know someone else knew what happened, that they didn't erase us. Okay, so even if those guys have magic weapons, and, and I'm just gonna hope it's like future tech and not some like sorcery shit. Like I, I'm, I'm just hoping it's you know laser guns or whatever. Um, There's no such thing as magic. Okay, all right. Just sort of free your brain for a second here, Doctor Wolf. We saw a literal werewolf earlier. Uh, yes, we did. Uh, Literal werewolf. That guy is part vampire. I mean, that seems like a metaphor for something, but I don't... 
I mean, you saw that thing in the, the fucking... Tree. I don't know what I saw. There could be explanations. Well, regardless, she drank his blood earlier, and I saw a werewolf before that. I, I don't think it's much of a, a, a leap in faith to say that those two things probably both exist, I mean, given the fact that we're standing in a goddamn secret fucking lab right now. Darla? Okay, no, listen, listen. to me. So it's really not okay. a big stretch to think that maybe, maybe, just maybe, magic exists, too. I mean, if we're going to assume the other things exist, I mean, fine, but... Okay. And I guess um, that does explain the blood plants, I guess. No, that's science. There's a difference. Science using vampire shit. All right, anyway, regardless... Okay, kid. I'll give you that. Between, I'll give you that. Between us, I think you you guys and us, we have a common a common thing that we both want, which is to get the fuck out of here. Right? He's pulling the crowbar out from the uh, emergency uh, container on the wall, and uh, he turns around and he goes, well, yeah. Yeah. Well, I also want to get the fuck out of here. <coughs> uh, uh. I share that sentiment. Uh, I think that if we put our numbers together, I think if you fight with us, if it, I think that we have the numbers, we could certainly overpower them, those two people, versus how many do you think we have? Is it is seven? seven? I think we have a shot. And he says, I hope you're right. And then we cut back downstairs. So, Vic and Mason, you've been uh, with this computer. What? Uh, let's see what you accomplish. Okay. Uh, first things first, uh, I'm going to track their movements for as long as I can. Uh, I assume that at multiple points they move to where there's blank spaces on the... You, Yeah, you witness um, anything other than when they go into the back hallway where the cells are. Okay. So I get to see like the tubes and stuff. But you don't. You're not able to see the tubes. Okay. You're able to see them walk into the room, and you're able to see all their reactions. You're able to see Reese's uh, frustrated, almost manic gestures as he explains his tragedy. But you can't see what he's gesturing to. Okay. Uh, so I, I would say that the, that first things first. I would probably uh, I would probably look to Mason and say you should probably take a look around first while I try and figure things out here. Mm. All right. So keep an eye on the door. I'm going to do what it. I can. So I'm going to move, uh, I, I assume all the video screens are just like all on one of the uh, monitors. Well, it's on both monitors. Mm -hmm. um, they are quite a lot of views. Okay. But you do discover that they are tabs you can move. Okay, uh, I'm going to move any tabs that uh, that include like outside where the where the uh, people looking around in the cave are, mm -hmm. and move them over all to one screen so that I can keep an eye on them. All right, Mason. Before I do the investigation roll, was this room merely a a lobby? It's just yeah. there is a computer, there is a desk, and there's an elevator behind me. Yeah, there is the the desk does contain some file folders. All right, investigation. So, yeah. Go ahead and look through there. Oh, wow. Uh, and while he's doing that, I'm going to try and poke around on the computer. So right. let's, let's go ahead. Give me a computer's roll. You got it. Okay. Four plus uh, five plus intelligence computers? Or... Yes, intelligence computers. Okay. I'll five for searching through file folders. Maybe I'll get another key. Oh, no. <laughs> it will be like, uh, so I rolled a two and a the one. Key card. <laughs> Upstairs, 18. <laughs> so um, that would be a critical fail, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, it would be. All right, we'll come back to that. Okay. Oh, gosh. Great. Oof. Oh. So uh, Mason, you extract the complete medical records of uh, four individuals. And uh, you don't have to write this down because I can just give you a copy. Okay. It's uh, Kip Miles, 14, male. Cleo Gardner, 17, female. Uh, Casey Winters, 19, female. Reese Noble, 22, male. Kip Miles was uh, uh, taken in for leukemia after chemotherapy failed. And uh, the re record says that uh, 
He was given a sample from uh, subject V001. Um, and the name next to that is Valens Osela. And you just sort of go down and you see each, each file has a list of samples, some more extensive than others, from yeah. various, what you can only assume are sources no. that all have names. No, I'm keeping but all of these. You have the complete records of everything that happened here. I'm just going to take all these files. You're and welcome, Mr. Six Successes. <laughs> stuff them in a back pocket or whatever, waistband, whatever I have. I don't think I have a duffel bag with me or anything like that. No, you just have your, your vest. Yeah, I'm just going to cram them wherever. Now to the complete opposite, <laughs> to Mr. Crit Fail. Okay. So um, you, you move the tab over and you find um, a sort of complicated, strangely, like, old, like almost MS-DOS style, like, OS underneath. Oh, I can't code. I can't um, code with hell. That's the problem, is you don't have the thought that you can't code. You think, ooh, I bet I can operate this. And you type file dash index dot, and you just type a bunch of computer soundy words. Okay. And then press enter. And, um... Across I'm hacking the mainframe. I don't, I don't even think to write slash help first. No, actually, yes. Yeah, uh, you write D slash right. help. That's much better, Garrett. You write slash help, you press enter, and across the room, the false door opens. <laughs> I hit slash help again. <laughs> Nothing happens. In fact, the, the lights in the room kick off and the red security lights come on. And a, a, a very high-pitched alarm sounds signifying the use of the auxiliary power. Uh. <laughs> and upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> what the actual fuck? Classic. Ah, <laughs> oh, god damn it. Bomb. <laughs> all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to... All right, we need to grab no. weapons. All right, Reese. What? Where are the weapons? What Anything that looks... Rather weapon like you said there was a crowbar, you said there was a fire extinguisher. <laughs> Reese is not listening to you at all. He's taking his crowbar, he's going back, and um you you sort of hear him shouting and, and a lot of fuss, and uh he and Casey emerge with um the feral looking girl in, in tow. They've got uh Reese kind of has her by a forearm and she's just looking sort of uh, frightened and, and, and like on the verge of attacking all around her. And I, I, I assume they have, they look like they have no intention of going after flesh eating disease boy. <laughs> the worst superhero, <laughs> worst sidekick. Not botulism boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Reese looks at you all and he go, and he goes, I don't know what the fuck is going on, but you should probably get your friends. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, is the, is the elevator the ele up here? The elevator is at the at the lower level with you guys. Yes. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go get him. So, okay. so it, right right at that very moment, uh, Vic is I'm just not looking going at the in, in the elevator. Uh, Vic is just looking at the computer like, why would that do that? Why would that do that? <laughs> Close the door. Close okay. the door. What did you? Whatever you did, close the door. I don't know. I, uh, slash close. Uh, slash emergency close. Slash help again. <laughs> slash help again. <laughs> Nothing. I, 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 <laughs> the, the computer is in complete lockdown mode. Okay. You cannot put anything into it. Okay. Uh, just it, hold on. Wait. Does the what about the video? Like, is am I seeing any? You can still see the, the 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 tap you drug over mm -hmm. was the view of the tunnels. So it is covering the view of the other floor, but you can still see the video feed. And you see two figures running directly, like, you don't know exactly where you are in relation to any of these, but you see them running through screen after screen after screen. Uh, I, I grab Mason and I, like, try to pull him down. We, like, we need to hide. But there's nowhere to hide. Can't, uh, is there any furniture in the room other than the desk we're currently at? There's a coffee table by the waiting chairs, but the desk is, is, is your best defense. Can, it is a I, tall, substantial desk. Uh, is there... Could I maybe jam the coffee table into the doorway? You could certainly try. Come here. And I, uh, and I walk over to the coffee table and 
start right about this point the the elevator doors open and the other part of the party arrives um yeah let's just (laughs) okay (laughs) it's like i'm sorry i am sorry all right we're gonna try and jam it up in there you did this maybe Vic. Maybe? Maybe? After this is done, we're all alive because that's what's going to happen. We're going to have to talk. (laughs) Well, Um, they know a way out, and apparently it's down, which is awful, but let's go. Oh. Oh, we have to go out the door. Lead the way, buddy. Let's go. Just Vic immediately drops the coffee table. Great. Is well, the the other people are not with you. Yeah. You all came down on no, your No, I'm yeah. gesturing down, like pointing down. Oh, we have to go in back in the yes, elevator. Yes, in the elevator. Okay, so yeah, coffee table in the door. So, um, as you all are, are having this communication, uh, a figure darkens the door. It's, um, it's a short, very broad, muscular-looking man. He has dark skin and, and short, um, very curly hair. He's got, uh, you know, a very sort of strong jaw and a little bit of stubble on his chin. He steps in sort of one foot at a time and Uh takes you all in. Um, His face is unreadable, and there's the coldness in his eyes that it sort of almost reminds you of Fort Knox. Like, he just looks like a stern, unshakable man. And uh, he's wearing a black button-up shirt with a tactical vest over it, a pair of tactical pants with big pockets, and curiously enough, um, dress shoes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, get in the fucking elevator. He sort of walks one more step in, and he has a gun in his hand. It's a pretty standard Glock pistol, but uh, it has a a sort of weird red glow towards the back of it. And he, Why do the hot ones uh, have to be evil? Okay. Uh, you set down the table. I'm still holding the table. Yeah. Uh, I thought we were just going to the elevator. You're, so you're behind me because I kept going with the table. Yes. I'm going to just grab my K2, turn it on, and you'll frag out and throw it at him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He, I'm... I'm just going to turtle the table, just put the legs up on my shoulders, and run back to the elevator. All right. I think that's a deception check right there. No, no, no I'm not going to make you roll for any of this. This is all story. I'm going to run towards um, the elevator. I'll, but I'll, I'll, I'll so, presence expression Something that. everyone <laughs> in the room notices, because it is noticeable, is that while he is clearly looking at you and, and taking measured steps towards you, he raises his hand pulls the trigger, and the gun almost pulls his arm sideways and nails the K2 meter in midair. Mm. Mm. Like he smacks it out of the way with his gun? No, like he fires the gun and the bullet hits the K2. K2 Jesus Christ. But not of, almost not entirely, it seems odd. It doesn't seem like a natural motion. There's something weird going on with the aiming. Oh my God, he's aimbotting. And, (laughs) and, uh, the, as, as you all rush onto the elevator and frantically press the button, a woman steps up behind him. Uh, she has a, a sort of chain shirt with some sort of odd yellow fiber going through it. It wraps around her torso and, and fuses around her back, and there's sort of a big metal piece that comes over the right side. And in her left hand, she has a large chain it looks almost like a whip with like a, a sort of big gauntlet that, that wraps around her wrists in an almost jewelry-like way. And uh, she she looks equally unflappable, although she does show a little surprise as she sees far more people than she thought would be here. And as the doors close on the scene, the man simply says, what do you know? And then the doors close and it takes <laughs> you <laughs> Really, honestly, it's a jumble of fuck all. <laughs> okay. So you yep. all are pulled up to the top. Oh. The door is open, and you, you all flood out. It's a very full <clears> corridor <throat> because uh, the, the the group of... I hit the emergency stop on the way out, if there is one. Um, There really isn't. It's... There's, like I said, I said earlier, good there's, attempt, there's though. one. It's a good idea, but there's literally one button. Okay. Up and down. If, if I may, if we're all out, can I just like leave the table in the way of the door closing? 
Yeah. So that it can't oh. shut. Hey. There you go. Sure. Because I turtled that thing in there. Hopefully they didn't shoot me. That's but... what I was afraid of. <laughs> don't worry. It's just water. Right. Yeah, don't think it. <laughs> yeah, hopefully the door doesn't close. Everything's fine. All right. Well, um, the elevator goes down all the same, but the door oh. does stay open. Yeah. <laughs> but once we get out, I put the, the table in the way of it closing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like it, it does jam the door open yeah. and it does delay the elevator, but eventually it does go down. It just rips the table in half. Yeah, it, oh. it sort of, well, it, it tables the table, if that, that does make sense. Oh. It rotates it with the pressure Ooh, so it goes a, sort of vertical. Hell of an elevator. <laughs> a, a elevator, if you will. Uh, so, <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> so, where do you all go? Uh, where they went. This is an unfamiliar place. I'm following these people. Yeah, same here. Well, they go into the room with all the tubes. Okay. They went into the room with all the tubes. Yes. Was there anything... Okay, to the room with all the tubes, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. I just realized. Uh, Mason and Vic... You're gonna get. You're gonna see the tubes. Yeah, yeah, we get to yeah, see. Yeah, so tubes. you see the tubes for the first time. <laughs> you get to see there, the tubes. There, there is a, a, a brief pause in the action uh, as the elevator struggles to do its job. I suppose you all have questions. Uh, we have. Uh, okay, so. All right, integrity check. Integrity check three. One success. All right, you're both okay. Uh. Okay, so well, I, I saw them all gas, so I knew that if there was something going to be something gross down here. I said, oh, okay, well, that confirms that. Uh, are we still moving or what? <laughs> yeah, are they there? Uh, Reese, is, is there any way uh, out from this level, or? The only way out is through them, he says, and he's, <laughs> he's okay. sort of, okay, he's, okay. he's we... fingering his crowbar, and... And when he he sort oh, of makes kid, don't do when it. he makes a move, Casey grabs his hand and she goes, "Don't." He goes, "How else are we gonna get out of here?" Okay, so <clears throat> I would uh, like to leave the room for a second, run back into the room with the plants, and grab bags of blood. Okay. okay. What about the the? T- <laughs> yes. Um, I think. Uh. I think Darla's gonna look at Reese and then look at the the figures that are in the tube and be like, uh, uh, "Can they help us? Are they are they are they still alive? Are they uh, vampires? Are traditionally very strong? Maybe they could help us out. Okay, what can you do? Are you strong? All I do is bleed, lady," he says, and. Uh, He's sort of struggling against Casey. He doesn't want to use force with her, but she's doing everything she can to hold him back. He's getting agitated. And at his other side, the sort of feral girl is skittering clo- like deeper and deeper into the darkest parts of the room. The As tensions run high, uh, she seems to be more overtaken by that sort of twitchy, golem-like uh, character to her. Yes, Mason? I don't know if they can help me right now. I'm just going to look for the fire extinguisher. Okay. Because people with firearms need to see me to shoot me. So if they can't see me, they can't shoot me. Very smart. Um, that's kind of a crapshoot. Um, roll me a high or low. <laughs> Do I have to call it? Yeah. Let's say left or, left or right. Left is low. Okay. Right? That's a seven? Yeah. So you go into the office side of the lab completely mm-hmm. by f- good fortune since you've not been given the tour. No. And you do, in fact, see a bright red fire extinguisher right there on the wall next to the door. And, I'm uh, going to try and take a covered position near the elevator. I'm going to try to attach or put into the bags any small things with lights on them that I have. Okay. <laughs> if I have string, if there's anything, if there's tubing, you, you don't really. I could, I could use tubing. I don't whatever. You, you are able to tie off the tubing to prevent having a bloody mess all over the floor. Um, yes, Wolf. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll let you finish with that first. But uh, when Wolf sees him with the crowbar in front of the tubes, he's gonna pick up a chair. 
Okay. Is everyone sufficiently armed? Because uh, let's do this. Because the the elevator dings open, and the table shatters as the woman hits it with her chain whip, and it is flung against the back wall and sort of crunches with a with a sickening noise. It's a good thing you were off to the side, Mason, or you would have been hit with that. And uh, as the two of them step very calmly into the into the foyer, brandishing their weapons, Mason raises the crowbar and swings. Doing combat? You mean Reese? Wait, Reese. Oh, Reese, Reese yeah. sorry, Reese. Go, Reese, go. And shatters the center to the right console with the, the long male figure. <coughs> uh, fluid drains everywhere. He hangs heavily in an apparatus as the, the sort of cords and, and all of the machinery attached to various parts of him are weighed down now without the aid of water making them weightless. And even the fixers in the hallway stop just for a moment (laughs) as the biggest gun in this place is brought off of safety mode. There's a second where all of you doubt that this is actually going to have any effect. The moment sort of stretches as everyone waits, not really sure if this thing is even alive. And it's in that brief second of quiet before a conflict breaks out that every one of you hears the sound that will very likely change your lives. And that's where we'll end for today. Uh. <laughs> Uncanny Valley Cancer Cell is created and produced by Buckle Nagel and Stephen Pope. The players are Garrett Schmigel as Vic, Deanna Venable as Darla, Michael Morris as JD, Stephen Pope as James Wolfe, and John Tompkins as Mason, with Buckle Nagel running the game. Hunter the Vigil 2nd Edition is produced and published by Onyx Path Publishing. Find us online at Uncanny Show on Twitter and www.uncannyvalleyshow.com. Make sure you check out Wild Cards, Experience Pointers, and other Saving Throw Show productions on the Saving Throw Network. And hey, have a good night. <laughs>